Hello, everyone. I am Mali Pompadit, founder and CEO of the SOAR Community Network and co-founder of SOAR Nebula. Our work is to develop compassionate, transcendent leaders who are contributing to a more compassionate, cohesive, and collaborative, what we call C3 world. Thank you for tuning in and to the SOAR Nebulous Change Agent series. We welcome you again where we bring you transformational and transcendent leaders from around the world who are creating positive impact in their communities. Today, we're interviewing Bill Pratsman. Bill, how are you? I am really well. I'm listening to the trash truck in my background. It's like, no, no, longer, longer, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear it here, so it's totally fine. But thank you so much. Thank you so oh much gosh. for saying yes great to be here, Molly. As you know, it's this is a true pleasure and a, and a real meeting of the minds and hearts. I, I love what you guys do at SOAR. It's just, and the, the, the nebula, the network you're building. Wow. I, I am just blown away to be here today. I appreciate you for saying that. And I appreciate for you, you for all the work that you're doing. And thank you again for being a part of this interview series, uh, because we want to highlight people like you who are changing your communities, doing it in such a profound, unique way that we wanted to gift it to the world and have people get exposed to your work and also highlight you because good people deserve to be on the stage front and center. So thank you. Let's go ahead and begin the interview by sharing a little bit of your background um, before we dive in. Bill Protzman, is, his mission is to raise awareness of the power of music as self-care. He is the world's leading expert on the power of music for physical, mental, and emotional and spiritual health, holds magna cum laude degrees in piano performance and creative writing, and has been a successful entrepreneur for more than 30 years. In 2011, Bill launched Music Care Inc., a for-purpose corporation to teach and advocate for practical ways music can be used for your self-care. In 2014, he was recognized by the National Council for Behavioral Health with an award of excellence, the industry's equivalent of winning an Oscar. He's, again, the world's leading expert in music for power, for physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. I can't, I wanted to say that twice because it's such a neat and cool way to take care of self and to take care of others. Welcome again, Bill. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, when I think about transcendent, compassionate leaders, I think about people like you who must have had some inspirations along the way um, to get to where you are today. So let's start there. Share with us how who in your life or how have you experienced kindness and empathy and compassion and what has led you to be here? Any Anybody come to mind in particular that has impacted you in a profound way? Oh, absolutely. Um, my mom was my first piano teacher. I was her first student too. And um, that little push that was persistent for maybe eight years until I really enjoyed making music on my own is just so important for me. Uh, you know, I was three when she started, literally. And to keep me going back to the piano um, gave me such gifts. I mean, I've, I've learned things about persistence and consistency and, and just showing up from that age, literally from that age. And of course it helps if you're making music because you get better at it if you're persistent, but it also affects every other part of what you do. You know, um, you keep going when it's hard and you find a way, you know, to get through it. And often that way isn't so much about power and strength as it is about finding something that lets you keep making a, a beautiful event happen. I mean, music is about beauty. It could be about many other things too, but, but to be able to show up on a stage as prepared as you possibly can be, knowing that you aren't as prepared as you want to be, and yet having to make something beautiful happen for the audience, uh, that's a real challenge. But you know if you've got persistence built into you and you've got compassion, like you can do that. And everybody loves an underdog, right? So that's why the acrobats fall the first time, so that or maybe twice, so that by the third time, the audience is really on board with them. This, this wonderful ability to communicate. And I've been blessed over the years. Uh, it's, it's Pride Month, and I have to acknowledge my gay men friends 
one of whom owned a record store and during a very difficult time in my life, but play beautiful music in there for me to listen to and sort of help mind me as I went through this transitional period of a divorce. Uh, I, I have been so blessed, Molly, by many, many people with compassion and insight much greater than mine who've just sort of offered that freely. Too many to name, but that influences me, right? And I know it influences others too. So um, for all of the people who've influenced me in that way in my life, I'm just so blessed. We're, we are very blessed when we can say there are just too many people to be able to name all of the people who have shaped us and gifted us with where who we are and where we stand today, um, yes. you know, on the shoulder of those giants um, that led us here. And also our ancestors who went through so much to lead us here. And I love that. That's so beautiful that you put it in that light. When you think about community champions, change agents, transcendent, compassionate leaders, what are some of the characteristics that you know over time with all of those people that you were just referencing in your life? What are some of the characteristics that constantly show up in these human beings? Oh, there's such strength special. and power there, uh, but it's not the force kind of power. It's, the, uh, it's kind of a radiance that surrounds people like that. I remember in college once, Jessie Norman came to sing. She gave a recital, an opera singer. And um, it was just her and a piano player in this auditorium full of 800 of us. And from the, from the moment Jessie Norman walked on stage, there was this presence in the room. And it was overwhelming. And I don't know if anybody else read it, but that presence that gives you chills before anything happens. Um, we saw the violinist uh, Istok Permelin played here in San Diego. And uh, my wife and I went to the symphony. It was standing room only. And when he comes on stage, um, it's a great effort for him to walk on stage. And he's going to get to a chair in the middle of the stage and sit there and perform. And there was a standing ovation from the moment that he began to walk onto the stage. And it took about a minute and a half for him to get there. And that presence was there too. And everybody felt it. Everybody felt it. It isn't that kind of, you know, it's because of what you do. Yeah, but there's something else. And when you bring that in, uh, that just... It, it just reaches out in a way that you can't describe. It's such a powerful and gentle and, and, and unstoppable force, you know? There I am mixing up power and force, but you guys know what I mean. Yeah, Bill, what do you think that is? That's something. Is that born with us? Hmm. Or is that something that like muscle memory comes because of life experiences and the grit and the triumphs and the pains and what do you think, what, what do you think that it is that when someone just steps on the stage and just as they're walking to get seated before they even perform, yeah. you can have that type of impact? You know, I would have had a different answer to this question, maybe as, as little as two weeks ago, but I think this is something that we're all born with. And that if we choose to align with our gift, um, then that power, that presence will align with us. And, and you can see this. I mean, I've watched Steve Jobs speak, for example, and I don't know if it's there with him, but he was still able to achieve all that he achieved. And I've never been in the same room, right? So I don't really know. But I've seen people that have, you know, like no stature of any kind show up that way with that power and with that presence. So I think it's a matter of, you know, we say, follow your passion, follow your bliss. When you align head, heart, mind, and spirit, you invite the power that is all there for you. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're able to do that authentically, I think that's where it shows, that, that's where it shines. And, and you know, it, you don't have to be a, a world-class violinist or an opera singer or, or Steve Jobs or leading a corporation. You can see this on the street. I've met homeless people who have that in their eyes. And it's, it's a beautiful human gift, I think, that we all deserve to at least explore a little bit and perhaps maybe align a little bit more with that and, and allow that power to come into our lives. Well, as you were mentioning the power of pursuing your joy and your bliss, how does music do that? How does it create a better society? How does what you do, your projects, your initiatives, everything you touch around music and, and the mission of Music Care Inc., how does that contribute to building a more collaborative, cohesive, and compassionate world? 
this question has so much insight and, and I wish there's a really short answer for it, but I'll do my best. Um, music aligns us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It's just, that's the power of sound and rhythm on our human systems. And science can measure the physical, mental, and emotional bits of that. All, everything else, what I call spiritual, science hasn't been able to measure that. But you can experience that opening to music if you're in a room full of people listening to something, or if you go to a concert and everybody at the right moment like lifts their lighters, used to, now we lift our cell phones. So there's that, that invitation to something more. So if all four of those things are working for you, um, you're in it. That's authenticity. A lot of authenticity is taught up here. If you think this, if you think this, if you decide this, if you choose this, then you're authentic. Well, maybe your head brain's authentic. What about the rest of you? What about the emotional stuff? What about the physical stuff? What about the spiritual stuff? Is that aligning with you too? If it's not, you're not completely authentic. So when, when you align that way, you open yourself to that power and music does that. I mean, just naturally, that's the way human beings respond to sound and rhythm. So becoming conscious of that and choosing music to help you align for specific purposes like compassion. What's your compassion music? For empathy, what's your empathy music? Uh, for, for productivity, what's your productivity music, right? Building yourself around an environment that supports your authentic efforts, that's the power of music. Mm -hmm. So with Music Cares Inc., let's talk about your mission. Why did you give birth to this beautiful entity? What ultimately, what outcome would you like? Before I invite others to learn more about it, I'd love to give you a platform to share why you decided that you were going to launch this and ultimately the outcome you desire for it. As you said in the introduction, I, I think it's important for people to become aware more than just as a, oh yeah, music is powerful awareness, but as a functional active awareness of what music can do. And that's not really something that I can teach because that's experiential. Every one of us gets that in a different way, but I can open the door. And if your doorway looks like traumatic experience, you know, that's a great doorway. There's lots of research that says traumatic experience is the gateway. If your doorway looks like productivity and you wanna take it to the next level, that's a great doorway too. And music will serve you in, in either of those places, whether you're going for self-actualization or intervention, it doesn't really make a difference. Music meets you there. So opening that doorway for you is one of those uh, things that works best by word of mouth. I can show you how to do it. You can show somebody else. It's like, I, I don't have a lock on this, people. This is ancient wisdom, right? We're, we're talking about something that's fundamental to who we are that we've mostly just sort of ignored or forgotten. And to remind people of that and see the lights come on, uh, that's a beautiful thing. So I came to this only by experience, watching it happen, right? I, I saw it happen so much. There must be something to this music thing, right, that I'm doing. And uh, over the course of time and lots of research, and there's been scientific exploration that supports all this, uh, we finally, I think, in, a, in our world today, we're at a place where we know these other interesting modalities that are out there uh, can be deployed for heuristic learning, and, and you can prove it for yourself, right? and for self-care and for the, the change of cultures and for the, you know, the collaborative things that we want now instead of competitive. This is just moving us in that direction that some call 5D consciousness or the matriarchy or whatever. It's, it's like embracing the whole thing instead of just saying, no, it's only over here. To put our arms around the whole thing and move together as complete individuals that can join together in the same kind of unified uh, approach to life. Now that's sort of an, a, a in a music evangelism position, but it is a movement, you know, it's, it's like soar. It's, it's a movement towards something better. Beautiful. I love your work. I really do. And if there's anything that we can do to support, share it like we're doing here on this podcast and also partner up, you know, we've been in discussions on figuring out how to help build C3 cultures within organizations and in society and music I mean, you see instruments behind me. Music means so right. much to me personally. So it's been a pleasure and honor to just meet you and uh, now explore partner partnerships with you. Uh, before we close out the interview, I would love for others to have the opportunity to connect with you, have conversations with you, perhaps even hire and engage your organization. So what is the best way to reach you and find more information about music caring? Well, I'm in all the normal places, of course, um, at Music Care Quest on Facebook and Instagram. And that's a great way of like connecting with the process. I call it a quest, but you can connect with the process at either of those places. 
at Music Care Quest. And um, I, I don't often give my telephone number, but if there's a reason that you need to call or text me, please do. It's 800-785-8596. Let's get right through and start the conversation instead of introducing all of these levels of funnels between us. 800-785-8596. Call or text and you'll reach me. Thank you again, Bill, for this opportunity. Uh, you are a very special soul. And uh, we knew at the first moment we had our conversation with you. And uh, we love your work. And we're so grateful that you said yes to our platform to be able to share you with the world. I appreciate you. Let's continue to explore together and let's build the C3 world together with music and through all the beautiful modalities out there. Thank you again. You're so welcome. Thank you, Molly. You're very welcome. Thank you for our listeners, to our listeners. Um, if you are an organizational leader and you wish to learn more about building your C3 culture, please visit us at soarcommunitynetwork.com. If you are interested in joining our Nebula Resource Hub for Transcendent Leaders, please visit us at nebula.soarcommunitynetwork.com and check out our membership benefits. Thank you for being a part of our community. Tune in next time. Until then, continue creating powerful and positive impact as transcendent leaders and community change agents. Take good care, everyone. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye.